Hi guys, it's Alicia. I'm back. So I wanted to try to do a full screen video for you today. And I just, this is new to me, so I'm not really used to looking only at the lens. So if I look at myself, it looks like I'm looking way over there at nothing. So just forgive me for that. I have to get used to looking at the lens only. So anyways, today I'm about six and a half months post E-Day. My E-Day was May 13th, 2019. So May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So we're about six months and it feels a little bit longer. But anyways, I wanted to do this video today just to tell you guys what some of the most unexpected things have been about this process and about getting dentures, what has surprised me, what I wasn't ready for, or things that you wouldn't think about that might be helpful to know. So the first thing that was the most unexpected to me was before I had this done. I was surprised by myself that I wanted to tell my story. I was surprised by myself that I could share my pain and that I could share my teeth and actually show the world, you know, because I had carried around so much shame and guilt and like depression about it, embarrassment. And I hid it from like everyone in my real life for such a long time that no one even really knew that I needed dentures. Like that's how well I hid everything. And at the time it felt like I wasn't doing a very good job hiding it. Like I thought it was obvious to everybody, honestly. Um, and then I decided to make a video and when I first started making my videos I really wasn't sure if I was gonna ever share them or post them I just did it for myself like you know thinking it would be beneficial for me and then I surprised myself and I posted it and then the next most surprising thing was the support that I got from you guys like immediately like right away so many nice people were commenting and helping me through especially um, after on E-Day, like I had a video hours after surgery, my first impressions, and it surprised me how supportive everyone was. I was afraid I was going to get attacked for some reason. I was afraid I was going to get negativity. I was afraid I was going to get people like, well, you deserve it. Like you must not have taken care of yourself. You know, I was surprised by the, the, honestly, the positive, the positives have surprised me the most out of anything. Like I was so horrified to be getting dentures at a young age. I just turned 35 and um, I was just prepared for everything to be negative. Like I was trying to mentally prepare myself for the absolute worst. And I was setting myself up almost for depression. And when things started happening in a positive way, it started making me realize, you know, like you can turn any experience into a positive one way or another, even if it's horrible, at the very freaking least, at least it's a lesson learned. If something goes really wrong, you know, it may not turn out how you want, but you have to learn something from it. And it has to be a positive. And, you know, the biggest thing that I've learned throughout this is, is that your mindset matters and that you can manifest things through your thoughts. That's true. Like, I really strongly believe that you can manifest your thoughts to come true. If you tell yourself the same thing every day, if you tell yourself every day, well, this sucks, I'm depressed, I hate my life. If you tell yourself that every day, you're going to hate your life. If you tell yourself every morning, this is going to be the best day that I can make it. I'm going to do as much as I can to be happy today. One step forward, you know, every day we're going to put one foot in front of the other. Like if you tell yourself you're going to have a happy life and you're going to be happy. And at the end of this, everything's going to be okay. If you tell yourself that you're consciously like working towards that result, it will manifest into reality. It's true. You can do that with almost every, anything in life. Like you, your mind matters. And I know I wasn't expecting, I was almost kind of expecting at first, like I was expecting the depression to hit me when I saw myself without my teeth. I was expecting that to be horrible and traumatic. It was traumatic just thinking about it and expecting it, honestly. Before it even happened, I'm already traumatized, imagining what I'm going to look like in the mirror and how I'm going to feel. I'm not going to be able to look at my husband. I'm never going to want him to see me that way because then that's going to be stuck in his head. And I was afraid he would never be able to get that out of his head. So um, I was preparing myself in a very negative way for that experience to lose my teeth. And so when it did happen, and I looked in the mirror, I almost couldn't look in the mirror for a while. Like my husband saw me without my teeth before I saw myself because he was brought into the room on E-Day as they were snapping in and out the teeth and trying to get them to fit. And, um, you know, so he had already seen me like that. I guess it was just for my own comfort. But what I wasn't really expecting about that, about seeing myself without my teeth is like, I don't even know how to put it. I wasn't expecting to be able to share it with you guys in videos. Like I had to do it in baby steps for one thing. I remember I took out like my lowers and I wouldn't do the uppers. And then in another video, maybe I took out the uppers and not the lowers. Like I just couldn't get past 
taking them all out for everybody. But I did eventually. I surprised myself and I have videos now where I've shown you guys, I've taken them out, talked to you guys, and everything is okay. And I've been so surprised mostly by the positivity in this community and how much people support each other, lift each other up. It's so worth it. And it's very hard to get that support unless you put yourself out there so that people can support you. So one way or the other, there are Facebook groups, there is YouTube. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people are finding the groups on Facebook and they're, they're helping so many people. I wasn't expecting really to meet, to fall into such an amazing community of people. Like I've met such amazing people and it's crazy that it's just our dentures and our dental experiences that are tying us together. Like people are watching me just strictly because of teeth, you know, how crazy is that? I wasn't expecting to be somebody that inspires other people. I mean, I was really... I felt like I was going to make these videos and kind of just be in a little corner on YouTube. Like, you know, a couple of people might find me. I wasn't really expecting thousands of views. That surprised me. It surprised me. I mean, I'm saying all these things that are positive, but there were negative things also that I wasn't expecting that hit me like blunt force trauma to the head type thing. So um, let's hit our vape one second real quick. Anyways, um, I could tell you about this real quick though. I've been vaping for now. It's been like three or four years. I was a smoker and I smoked about a pack a day for like 15 years. Probably I started, you know, socially experimenting with it when I was a younger teenager. By the time I was 18, I was buying them myself. I don't know why. This stupid. And then, you know, I always felt like I'm not going to get addicted because it's just for fun. Like, I don't know. I didn't understand addiction. I didn't understand dependence, any of those things. So anyways, after a long time smoking, my husband and I wanted to quit and vapors were kind of a new thing. We decided to give it a shot because his brother had done it and stopped smoking cigarettes, switched to vaping and had managed to quit smoking cigarettes. So one, one year we had a cheer competition going on with our little, with our kids. They were cheering and they all traveled to Kalahari uh, indoor water park resort we went there for the weekend we didn't bring cigarettes we just brought our vapes so we were kind of stuck there for three days with no cigarettes just the vapes it forced us to switch over to this and I will say I know there's a lot of controversy about vaping and like a lot of things on the news it's kind of scary but my husband and I hardly ever get sick anymore and I used to cough every morning cough up phlegm it stinks it's gross I got chronic bronchitis every freaking year and ever since I stopped smoking, even though I vape, I don't have a cough in the morning. I don't cough at all. I hardly ever get sick and I haven't had bronchitis since I quit smoking. So that was very unexpected. And I also think it was a very good thing. Like it's not a good idea to necessarily be vaping and stuff during your extraction period of time. But back in the day when I would have extractions and I was a cigarette smoker, I would just keep the gauze in and smoke anyways. And I was a very lucky person to never get a dry socket. So when I had this surgery done, I was already vaping and um, I just took it really easy. Like, you know, you don't want to suck on anything very hard. That's what can give you, that's what can like make a blood clot fall out and sucking on straws or inhaling too much on a cigarette or, you know, they're just nasty or whatever. And vaping is probably not the best either, but anyways. So something else that really surprised me about this experience was that I would want to talk about it so much. Like I, I, am, I feel like I'm sort of used to dealing with my dental problems inside internally. Like I wasn't used to talking about these things with people. And when I started to open up and I started this channel, even before my surgery, I felt like very pleasantly surprised that I was able to talk about these things, talk about my emotions and talk about everything that's affecting me. And I was even really surprised at how many people it helped and how many people reach out to me and say that these videos help them. That's why I do it too. Like it gives me, it's, it's a good feeling. I just feel like we can all relate on some level with each other. And some of my experience may help somebody else. And that's why I share primarily and to give hope. But I am going to mention some negative things that surprised the shit out of me. That would be a good idea for people to keep in mind if you haven't gone through this yet. So... I was surprised at the consultation that we were approved for the loans like that. I was surprised that surgery was set up just for a few weeks later. I was surprised that when I showed up to surgery, 
there was a lot of miscommunication about the sedation. And I had even called prior, making sure they knew I'm going to need oral sedation before the nitrous and Novocaine. And when I showed up, they were like, no, it says you didn't want it. When really I had just said, I don't want like any strong narcotics, but I will want a sedative. If it's like a Xanax, I'll do that. I don't need any other strong meds. Um, because I've only ever really needed ibuprofen after my extractions. And I wasn't really worried too much about the pain after surgery. I was worried more about the pain during surgery. So I'm not surprised at how my surgery day went. Other than I'm surprised I was able to sit through it because I was awake and I was hyperventilating. I'm surprised I was able to calm myself down and stop hyperventilating. I was shocked, absolutely shocked that I couldn't shut my jaw and they were letting me leave that way. That was like the shock number one. And I have watched a lot of other people and their experiences and that is not uncommon. It is common. It's unfortunately very common to leave your surgery day feeling like totally broken and hopeless and like you hate your teeth. Like apparently that's normal and apparently it's normal not to be able to shut your jaw and you know, in my case, it was pretty evident to me from the very beginning that they would need to be remade, especially because they had to file off half the teeth just so my jaw would shut. And it surprised me that my dentist didn't immediately offer to make it better. Let me shut my door. But yeah, it surprised me that they they were expecting me to keep the teeth that really hardly fit that I couldn't shut my jaw in. And what was most surprising after that was when I, I called right after we left surgery and I said, I need an adjustment. I can't live like this. I can't live, I can't live with my jaw stuck open. Like I just can't, you know, it was depressing. It's painful. It's traumatic. And it's very uncomfortable to have your jaw constantly stuck in an open position. So I didn't like that. And when I went in the next day for the first um, follow-up appointment, I was pretty floored by my dentist's attitude. He was pretty mean to me, kind of. And not mean, not mean, maybe I shouldn't say that, but he was just kind of like, well, you're crazy to expect perfect teeth a day after dentures. And I took that pretty, like, emotionally. I, I didn't like that. I just didn't like how he treated me. And I felt like, you know, they're so nice at the consultation. And sometimes after it's just, you know, they get busy and they have other patients and they're stressed out and you're complaining. And sometimes it just doesn't lead to a great experience. And I was very surprised at the difference in attitude from consultation to immediately after surgery. Then even more so, I was really surprised dealing with the denturist. And when they agreed to make, remake my second set, surprisingly, I had to fight quite a bit. Like I had to really fight for that second set to even get made for these. I was surprised that I had to fight for it. Like it's very obvious when you look at the first set what the issues were, and I don't think they were an appropriate set that I, I shouldn't have been made to feel like I have to keep them. So they did the right thing to remake them. But um, I was surprised at how much of a fight it was to convince them. So I think that's something to prepare yourself for and maybe something to ask about first, maybe find out what their policies are, you know, how, how soon after can they start remaking them? Because a lot of times you're going to say they can't do it until you've healed and they can't do it for months. And that's a long time to live with something you don't like, and there might not be a way around it, but you know, it's hard to know what to even ask a dentist when you haven't gone through it. And, you know, you don't think of the questions that need to be asked until you've gone through it. And now in hindsight, I can say, well, I should have asked this and I should have done this and I could have done it different. So I can't really do that now, but I can tell you guys things that might help. So, and it might help me if I ever go through this again. Like if I ever get another set made, there are things I would definitely ask. But so other things that were the most unexpected, I wasn't expecting like um, on surgery day, the implants didn't hurt. I was expecting them to hurt. I was surprised that I didn't feel them going into my jawbone. And even after surgery, I never felt pain from the implants. Like I never said, oh, I'm so sore. Like, the implants hurt so much. Like the teeth themselves hurt because when you get dentures and put them in your mouth, well, your extractions hurt. But just having something else in your mouth like that can be very uncomfortable. It can be very painful and cause a lot of sore spots which was another thing I wasn't expecting. I was never, I was not expecting the sore spots. I didn't understand and I still don't, well, I knew I get why. I know why you get sore spots and everything, but I wasn't really prepared for that. I didn't know it was so common. And every time I would go to the dentist for any kind of adjustment, I'd always end up with more sore spots. And um, I was just surprised by that. I was also surprised that, um, well, let me see. I was surprised at how hard it hit me emotionally going through this, I guess, and different parts of it, like different parts can be so depressing. And it's, 
surprised me like the impact and influence it has on my whole entire life you know because when you get into a depression like about your teeth for you can't talk right you can't eat right you can't you don't look right you don't feel right and it's not something you can fix and some of the problems you know are showing on the outside not even so much the inside like in my case um like when I had the second set made, it made my top lip disappear or it made my bottom lip stick out too far and it just changes your appearance. And I really wasn't expecting the reaction I had to myself, to seeing myself in different sets of teeth. You know, like going into this, I expected to walk out of surgery happier than I've ever been with a perfect set of teeth. Like that's literally what I expected. So my dentist telling me, you know, you're crazy to think you're going to have perfect teeth the day after surgery. He's not lying. That's true. That's a high expectation to think you're going to be 100% healed and 100% happy, not healed. But you know, emotionally, I felt like my emotional issues were going to be all taken care of once I had a perfect smile. And that was not the case. Like there was a lot of things I had to work out. A lot of things internally I had to deal with. Like you have to learn how to be okay with yourself when you're not okay. You have to learn how to be okay with yourself when you hate what you see, you know? And what, I mean, ultimately, I wasn't really expecting to, like, fall in love with myself in a way. I wasn't expecting to be able to embrace myself and my sadness and my insecurities. I wasn't expecting to be able to tell everybody how I feel and show you guys my story. Wasn't expecting the love. I was expecting something negative. Now that we've gotten the ball rolling and I have such an amazing supportive fan base here. I don't know if you call it fan base, but my subscribers here. You guys are amazing and you're very just supportive. You're everything I need and you're positive. And now that's what I expect. Most people that see my videos are very positive. And um, so I'm not as afraid anymore of sharing things with people. I wasn't really, I was expecting to have an increased self-confidence, but it's different than I thought it was going to be. It's a different confidence because it's not like just physical and it's not just about the teeth and how they look. It's about me as a person. And I feel like I've grown a lot in this last six months since E-Day, I've had to really think about a lot of shit that was hard to think about. And I've had to deal with things that I never thought I would have to deal with. And a lot of things from my past come up and affect me in different ways. And even like, you know, in your relationships with other people, it's hard to get other people to understand where you truly are. And sometimes you get frustrated because you want to just be sad and upset. And there were days when I just wanted to be negative and just be like, nope, it's never going to be better. I'm screwed. I'm screwed. And I didn't want to hear anything else, you know, like, um, when people try to cheer me up, some days you don't want that. Some days you just want to be allowed to be miserable. I wasn't expecting to be so happy, ultimately, I guess. I mean, and I feel like it's a different kind of happiness. It's not superficial. It's something that's inside of me that's changed. And it's not even dependent on my teeth. Like if something happened and I lost my teeth today, of course, that would be devastating like if I had to go back to my first set, but I could still be happy. Like I've, I still have a happiness inside me and a peace of mind that I feel like I didn't have before. Like once you're stripped of everything that makes you feel beautiful, it forces you to find other ways to know your worth, know the beauty inside you or about you as a person. It's not all physical. And, um, this is a very physical experience, but it's also very emotional. And I think that Maybe people don't always realize how emotional and for how long, because sometimes the process isn't over quickly. And even in my case, I feel like after six months, this went pretty fast. You know, like there's a lot of people that have to still wait eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 months before they get their permanent teeth. And a lot of people that have to go without them. And I think a lot of people are not expecting the, the real possibility that they'll go through the whole process, wax try-ins and everything, get their teeth and then not be able to wear them at all. And that's pretty shocking. No one expects that. No one expects their dentist to just be like, well, that's it. Sorry, did our best. No one expects that. You expect the professionals to stay professional. You expect them to work with you and you expect them to be trying to do everything they can to make you happy. So when you run into one that doesn't have that attitude, it can be really shocking and it makes you have to like really, you have to shed that, um, What's the word? I'm getting distracted. You have to shed the layer, of, that shell of a person that you were that is so vulnerable and that is so self-doubting and insecure and unable to speak up. Like, that's the person I was while I had my broken teeth and I didn't like to express myself so much because I was so insecure. 
So you do have to learn how to rise above that and be able to speak for yourself logically. You have to be able to, <laughs> you have to be able to figure out the best way to express yourself without just letting your emotions rage out of you and affect everyone around you. Um, and like with my dentist, you know, your perceptions of things can be different based on your emotions. Like they're the professionals, they're going to work every day and they're used to seeing people, you know, sorry, messing with my hair, it's driving me nuts. Um, but those people that are professionals, they're used to seeing people going through this pain. They know that at the end of the day, most of their patients are probably happy, but we as the patients don't always know that. We don't always see all the patients that are happy. So we don't know for sure. Um, and I think sometimes the way they act or say things, they don't know how it affects the patient. And I don't think me, I didn't know as a patient, like I wasn't really expecting the kind of short, snippy impatience that I've experienced at times at my office with my denturist. I wasn't really expecting that. I wasn't expecting them to take it so personally whenever I would ask for a change. And I felt like they, I felt like he did. And I feel like there's a lot of dentists, maybe denturists, that it's kind of hard to work with them because they're very set in their ways and take it personally when you ask for something to be changed. I wasn't expecting that. Um, but ultimately this has been a positive experience for me despite everything I've been through and like, you know, everything that has happened. Marilyn, you have to be a little quiet, please. I'm making a video. Um, ultimately though, at the end of the day, this was a very positive experience and I have no regrets. I'm very happy that I did it. I'm glad that I've learned the things I've learned going through it. And I hope that what I've learned helps other people. I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I, you know, could say that I have found now that I wasn't expecting. Mostly, I just feel like I found myself and I feel like I found my true self and I feel like I'm okay with myself and I feel like I love myself and I feel like I want to be myself. Like, I want to fully be myself. Like, I really want to just enjoy the person that I am. And there are a lot of growing pains when you get new teeth. Like, you have to kind of grow into them and get used to them. And that can be really difficult. But it, it won't happen if you don't wear them. Like, you really do have to wear them enough to start seeing if you can get used to them. And, like, if you wear them for, like, months and you still don't like them, chances are you probably won't. Like, with my first set, you know, I mean, actually, with my first set, ultimately, I did end up liking them. But they were very ill-fitting. They were very uneven. They were very not right. And I did need a new set. So, thank goodness. And finally, the last thing I wasn't expecting was that I'd love this set of teeth. And I was not expecting that they would fit as well as they do. Was not expecting that it was possible for him to make them so tightly fitting that food doesn't even get under them. That the lowers don't lift up. And, you know, I'm seriously amazed with the fit of these teeth. Like, even if they weren't perfectly exactly how I would have made them, they fit so well that I wouldn't risk screwing that up for anything. So... I'm very appreciative. It even feels good just talking, you know? And I don't know. Maybe you don't realize. I mean, I, you always know that it's a big deal to have nice teeth. But you don't realize how much of a toll it's taking on you until you fix it. Because part of me wanted to deny it. I didn't want to admit to myself that my teeth were really holding me back. But I... I just, I was letting it hold me back. I didn't want to start a YouTube channel. I didn't want to go live on Facebook. I didn't want to be doing my makeup. I didn't want to be talking and looking at the camera and having everyone see everything in my mouth. And I was never expecting to be so happy, really. And so okay. Like, it's okay. Like, I can take my teeth out and look in the mirror and it's okay. Like, it's not the end of the world, you know? I'm the same freaking person with or without my teeth, you know? And my husband, God bless the man, he will love me no matter what. And I know that. I know that. And I think it's almost just as hard for them to look at us without our teeth as it is for us to look at ourselves. Possibly. Because I don't think anyone really truly can comprehend what it feels like to look at yourself without your teeth until you're there yourself or you're about to be and you're imagining it. So yeah, that's really hard. It's hard to know what to expect until you're going through it. I just want people to know that it's going to be okay. Like even you might feel very traumatized and you might feel very depressed and you might feel like you're never going to be okay again. You'll never feel like yourself again, but you can get there. You really can. You just have to hold on and you have to keep that positive mindset where you tell yourself every single day, you tell yourself things are going to be okay. We're going to get through this. You know, we're going to be happy. Ultimately, we're going to be happy and we're going to do everything we have to do to be happy. You put it on yourself. Take responsibility for it. And that's all you can do. If you get a bad result, you know, it sucks and it's okay to be upset. 
And I just, I pray for anyone that's going through that where their dentists aren't cooperating and won't remake them. I pray that you find solutions and you find someone that will. And you ultimately end up with a beautiful smile that you love, that you can call your own, that feels like your own. But anyways, <laughs> I think that's enough of what I wasn't expecting. Um, I wasn't really expecting to be able to eat so many foods still. Like, you know, I can eat almost normal. And after my first set was so badly, like it didn't work very well and I couldn't eat that well at all like I got so used to not eating normally that I didn't really appreciate until now how amazing it is to be able to eat normal like I can eat now almost the same as I did before when I had all my teeth or better because now I do have all my teeth and I'm not missing my molars and stuff so that was one of the biggest surprises too that you can actually get such an amazing fit that you'll forget what it was like to eat with jacked up teeth but anyways, I think that is it. I'm going to go. We got to make some dinner and I'm going to see. Hopefully this video will be all right. I'm trying to make a, you know, full screen. See if it comes out that way because I turned my phone sideways. So hopefully that works and we'll see how we like it. You guys can let me know. And aside from that, if you made it this far, please let me know what you think I should do with my hair. If I should leave it blonde or if we should just dye it back to dark brown. And then if we do that, I'm probably going to let it grow down to my ass before I do anything with it because I really regret even doing anything with the blonde. Blonde is just, it's damaging. I've tried to do it before. I always end up regretting it. I mean, I don't really regret it, but I do want my hair longer and I don't think I can have long hair if I keep bleaching it. It's almost impossible, <laughs> at least just for me. So anyways, I will let you guys go. If you have any specific questions or you want me to elaborate on anything that I said in this video, please let me know in the comments. And that's about it. Leave video suggestions down there. Let me know where you are in the treatment plan. And let me know what the most surprising thing is for you after going through this or before going through this. What has been the most unexpected thing that you found so far? I'd be very curious to know. But anyways, that's it for now. Please subscribe if you're new. And I will be back as soon as I can in my next video. Love you guys.